Investigation in for ballistic single item auctions by means of signaling. And uh, Michal is also one of the organizers, uh, as you all know, along with uh, Nam over there. Actually, I think we should just give them a hand of applause just to start with. So. That's a great idea. <laughs> And uh, Michal also has an announcement to make about the today's tip. Right, so uh, I already have a microphone. So I have a few announcements. Um, I must don't count it in my time. Uh, okay, first, okay, first, user account control. Um, okay. Okay, so first of all, we really want all the slides to be online. So if you already have your slides on this computer, by default, we are going to put it online unless you tell us otherwise. So if you want otherwise, just tell us. Uh, if you don't have your slides on this computer already, then please come to us uh, and we'll put it here and then it will be online. Okay, so this is first. Uh, second, regarding the trip today, um, the trip is going from the main entrance of the campus. The buses will be waiting for you at uh, exactly 2.30 p.m. today. Uh, so please uh, don't be late. And for those of you who are coming only to the restaurant later on, then it will be at 6.30 at the Terrassa restaurant, which is right across the Jerusalem Cinematheque near the Old City. So you are, all, you are welcome to be there. Now another announcement regarding the restaurant. So far only 60 of you registered to the dinner and we are required to pay, in any case, for at least 80 people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so either, either uh, so we really encourage you to come and let us know you are coming, even though you haven't registered, just come and tell either me or Noam, and we'll uh, sign you up for this. Otherwise, we really encourage the rest of the people who did register to eat more by factor four third. <laughs> Okay, and now uh, we are going to start the real stuff. Uh, where is Ronit? Ronit, uh, did I say everything correctly? Good. Okay, so now I'm going to um, make a sharp transition and talk about revenue maximization uh, in probabilistic single item auction by means of signaling. And this is joint work with Yuval Emek, Iftah Gamzu, and Moshe Tenenholz. Okay, so like the previous talk, this is also going to be uh, a talk on uh, real-time market for your impression, display ads, and while we are waiting for the computer... <laughs> Daniel? <laughs> uh, okay, and it's also going to be about asymmetry of information, but it's going to be a very different uh, asymmetry of information. So offer, this seems to be stuck. I'm sorry. Amos, please take this also. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, so we argue that asymmetry of information is very prevalent in auction settings, and this is from very different uh, perspectives. Moshe presented before uh, one perspective of asymmetry of information that was uh, asymmetry of information between the different bidders. And what I'm going to, to argue in this talk is that there is also a very uh, inherent asymmetry of information between the auctioneer and the bidders. In many cases, the auctioneer uh, has a much better information about the auction goods than uh, the actual bidders. And the question that we are going to pursue here is uh, how best can the auctioneer exploit his informational superiority in order to generate higher revenue? So this is also going to be a talk about revenue maximization. Uh, the auctioneer has more information than the bidders, and we want to know, okay, so what can you do with this information to generate more revenue? It's about the goods. Exactly, right. Okay, <clears throat> so the application that we have in mind for this is about uh, the market for impressions. It's also going to be a, a real-time market, so the impressions are sold item by eye, impression by impression. 
And here is the scenario we have in mind. So this is uh, a publisher, in this case, uh, Yahoo. And there is a, an ad here of Huggies Pull-Ups. Now consider this uh, businesswoman here who is in the middle of a meeting. She's surfing the web, navigates through the web pages, and suddenly she reaches the Yahoo website. And a, a Huggies Pull-Up uh, ad pops up. Well, she's very busy. She's in the middle of a meeting. She doesn't really care. She doesn't pay too much attention. And so the value that Huggies gains by targeting the ad to this uh, successful businesswoman is very limited. In contrast, consider this daddy uh, who is at home with his baby on his lap, uh, probably a stay-home dad, listening right now to baby songs and surfing the net. Uh, uh, and then he also goes to a Yahoo website and he also observes this uh, Huggies pull-up ad. Well, he's totally excited about it. This is exactly the solution he was looking for. And uh, most chances, he'll just next thing he'll do is run to the grocery store to get a few uh, packets of those. So Huggies has a very high value. Uh, Huggies gains a lot, uh, a very high value from tar targeting the ad at this, uh, at this daddy. And more generally, uh, what advertisers wish to do is to target the, the advertisers at the right users. The end users. This is their goal, and in, this, in the case of Huggies, this will be the male population, of course. Okay, so um, let's see who are the players in our market for impression. We have, so in every auction, we have to identify the goods, the auctioneer, and the bidders. So in this, uh, in this example, the goods are the end users. Those are the impressions. And these are the end users who navigate through the web pages, and they are the ones who are looking at the, uh, looking at the ads. The bidders are the advertisers, such as a Huggies, iPhone, Coca-Cola, etc., different companies that wish to uh, advertise their products. And they, as I said before, they wish to target the ads at the right end users. Usually, they have very limited knowledge for who is behind the impression. They might have some uh, uh, knowledge about the distribution in the population, but they have very limited information uh, about who is really the, the actual end user who is currently looking at the uh, ad. And we also have the auctioneer, who is, in this case is the publisher. This can be Yahoo, MSN, Google, uh, uh, or any other publisher. The publisher is the one who controls and generates the web page contents. And therefore, uh, it usually uh, has a much more accurate information about the site visitors, either directly or through a, a third uh, party like a DSP or anything like this. Um, and the question that we want to ask, OK, so the auctioneer, the publisher in this case, has a much better information about the goods, the end users in this case. How can it exploit it in order to generate more revenue? This is the question. Okay. We also assume that there is a valuation matrix. So what we have here is that the bidders are uh, in the rows. We have the different bidders. Those are the advertisers. And we have the items in the columns. And the valuation matrix show us the value of each uh, advertiser, for e of each bidder for each item. So for example, here, Huggies is one of the advertisers. It has a very high value from this guy. And it has a very low value from this woman. Okay, and let's uh, uh, begin by assuming that this valuation matrix is common knowledge. Everybody knows it, okay? <coughs> Great, so um, that takes me to, to actually present you the formal model that we have. This is a model uh, that we call probabilistic single item auction. So w we, in, in one second you'll understand, okay? And if not, ask me again. Okay. So we have a single item which is sold in an auction with n bidders. Uh, the auctioned item is one of m possible items. And we have a, a valuation matrix V where VIJ is the value of bidder I for item J. Now here comes uh, the answer to your question. There is a probability distribution over the auctioned items P. This is also common knowledge. Uh, everybody knows it, including the bidders, but the auctioneer also knows the actual realization of the item. 
Okay, so the bidders know the probability distribution over the items, and in contrast, the auctioneer knows the actual realization of the good. Okay, in the example of uh, market for impressions, the publisher knows the identity. So in some cases, it's not really the identity, but some uh, information about the profile of the end user, of the actual end user that is observing the ad right now. And then we also assume that the item is sold in a second price auction, meaning that the winner is the bidder with the highest bid and the payment is the second highest bid. Okay, this is known to be truthful uh, and this is the auction that we are going to study in this talk. So uh, an instance of our problem of our probabilistic sing single item auction is really given by a, a, this tuple, uh, that has n bidders, m items, a probability distribution p over the items, and the valuation matrix v, v which tells us how much uh, bidders value the different items. Okay, so, so this is how our, really model, uh, our model looks like. This is the valuation matrix. These are the bidders, these are the goods. This is the, val the value vij here, and this is the probability distribution over the goods. We have p1 to pm, which is the probability that these items uh, are chosen. Okay, so, uh, so exactly, you have some expected value. So, here is, so this is exactly what I'm going to, to say now, okay? So we have um, each bidder, all, all, all the bidders know is the probability distribution over the items, right? So what's, what's the information, that is, so what, what can it do? So each bidder really has an expected value given this probability distribution P over the item. Every bidder has some expected value of the auctioned item. It doesn't know the realization, all you know is the, dis the probability distribution. If they win an item, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here is a very simple observation. Um, just like in the deterministic case, it's also a dominant strategy in a second price auction to... Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. The actual people, the end user are not the bidders. These are the goods, okay? The end users are the goods. The advertisers are the bidders. This is, this is very important and it is confusing. So thanks for bringing it up. Great. You don't know, right? You have a probability distribution over the population. You know that half of the population is male, half of the population is female. So you know that you have some expected value. These are some categories, and the world is divided in n categories. Right. Okay, and you, you have some probability, you know some probability distribution, but you, know, you don't know what is the category that is currently observing your ad. You, you have the probability distribution, that's all you have, okay? Okay, so, so here it's a dominant strategy to reveal one's expected value. So what will happen in this, uh, in this auction? Well, we have the, this is max one, it's, it's the highest expected value over all bidders. And this is, uh, say, max two, meaning the second highest uh, uh, expected value. So the expected revenue of the auctioneer in this auction will be uh, this expression here. Can you see it, by the way? This is the second highest, the max two uh, over all the bidders of the expected value. So this is, uh, um, if the auctioneer doesn't reveal any information to the bidders, this will be the uh, expected revenue that the auctioneer will make. And now, um, I just want to, to uh, talk uh, for a few seconds about this market for impressions. There are many models that have been proposed and used in this uh, market for impression, and they vary a lot in many different aspects. So, for example, there are, um, um, there are, they, they vary in the actual mechanism that is used to sell the impression. Sometimes it's an auction. If it's an auction, it can be first price or second price. It can be also fixed price. It, it doesn't necessarily need to be an auction. And also, they vary in the, in, in, in the question of, of how much information is revealed to the advertiser. So some publishers reveal a lot of information, others reveal less information. 
And what we uh, propose is a, a signaling scheme technique. Um, and what we'll show is that this, this uh, signaling scheme technique can significantly increase the auctioneer's revenue. Uh, so what do we mean by a signaling scheme? By a signaling scheme, we mean that the publisher partitions the impressions into segments, and, and once an impression is realized, the segment that contains, uh, th uh, that contains it is revealed to the advertisers. Okay, let's see how it uh, looks like. So uh, this is the, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, you just have to believe me. You ask if if it's all a uh, if it's all a uh, common knowledge, the valuation matrix, etc. Right. That's true. That's true. So he can. He can. So first of all, later on, I'll relax the assumption that this valuation matrix is common knowledge. Uh, and second, this is not a mechanism design perspective. We assume that we already have a mechanism in place. This is second for assumption. And we want to ask, how can we make higher revenue? So okay, so in this in this particular situation that you described, it may be well it may be very well the case that you are right. But we have very different structures of valuation uh, matrices. In some cases, there is a lot of heterogeneity between the you, the value of the bidders. To I don't give him the the option to lie. Okay, I'm an honest person. See. <laughs> Okay, that will be a f future direction. Okay, so we have uh, so we have this uh, auction, and um, so what is a signaling scheme? The auctioneer partitions the goods into pairwise disjoint cluster that we call C1 to CK. That the union of them is is all the goods. And so okay, so it's very important to stress that the auctioneer a priori. <coughs> partitions the goods into the clusters, and only then a good J is chosen with probability PJ. We, we know the probability distribution. And then the bidders are signaled the cluster CL that contains this particular object. And then it induces a new probability distribution. So now the bidders know that the probability of item J given the signal, the, given the cluster CL, is PJ over PCL for every good J in CL or zero otherwise. So this is the new, the induced probability distribution. So in a way, after they get the signal, they have a better understanding of, uh, the, of the picture. And this is the problem that we are going to study. We call it the revenue maximization by signaling. And the problem is, what is the signaling scheme that maximizes the auctioneer's revenue? How can you partition the items in a way that will maximize your uh, revenue, given that we are doing it in a second price auction? Yes. 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 It's the same signal that goes to everybody. Um, also, as, as a, an ongoing work, which was, I'm not going to present here, we also consider asymmetry, uh, asymmetric uh, signaling scheme. This is a great. Uh, this is, this is obviously a great question because I study. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, and recall we are talking about second price auction here. Okay, so each bidder I submits a bid BI and the highest bidder wins and pays the max two over all the bidders of BI. So here, we, he, uh, here it, uh, how it looks like. Uh, we have, in this example, we have four different uh, categories or, or goods. We have males from California, males from Arizona, female from California, and female from Arizona, with this probability distribution, P1 to P4. And we have this valuation matrix. And there are two trivial signaling schemes that the auctioneer can uh, form. One is just to have a single cluster of everything, and this means that he reveals absolutely no information to the bidders. Okay, this is one trivial signaling scheme. 
The second uh, trivial signaling scheme is just to form single phone clusters of all, the, of all the goods, and this means reveal all the information to the bidders. Just tell the bidders the actual realization of the good. And obviously, it can also do other, all, all kinds of signaling schemes. For, for example, it can partition it into males and females, or it can partition it, 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 partition it into California and Arizona, or every other scheme that uh, he wants. And the question is, what's better for him? So let's see if, uh, 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 two simple examples to check whether it's worthwhile for the auctioneer to reveal the information to the bidders. Here is one example where there is, so here there is a really high heterogeneity with respect to the demand. So in this case, there are four goods, four bidders. Every bidder is interested only in a, si in a single good, and every good is desired only by a single uh, bidder. In this case, if uh, the auctioneer reveals all the information to the bidders, then the revenue will be zero, because the second price in every column is zero, so it gets no revenue. In contrast, if it doesn't reveal the information, if it doesn't reveal any information to the bidders, then the expected value of each bidder will be one-fourth, and so the second price will be uh, one-fourth. So uh, by not revealing the information, the, re the expected revenue of the auctioneer is one fourth. So in this example, it's better for the auctioneer not to reveal the information. Let's see this other example. In this example, now there is already a competition. Each good is now desired by, by two different agents, by two different bidders. So if the auctioneer reveals the information, it's really good because the second price for each good is one, so the expected revenue will be one. In contrast, if it doesn't reveal the information, the expected value of each bidder is a half, so the expected revenue will be just a half. So in this case, it's better uh, uh, to, to reveal all the information to the bidders. And more generally, in this, so, so a natural question will be, okay, so um, we have these two trivial signaling schemes. Can one do much better by very complex signaling scheme? So here is an example showing that the answer is yes. So in this, uh, this is a generalized example of the, of the previous uh, four by four example, uh, where we have just this uh, one on the diagonal and zero uh, uh, otherwise. So in this example, by a single cluster, the expected revenue will be one over n, just like we, have the, we had the one fourth before. By single tone clusters, uh, the expected revenue will be zero, because in every column we have a second price of zero, but we can do much better. How can we do much better? We can partition the goods into a, a pairs. And from each pair, we get expected revenue uh, of a half. So the expected revenue in this case will be a half. So we already gain by uh, a linear factor of the trivial signaling schemes. And the question that we want to pursue is, OK, so uh, what's the optimal signaling scheme given a particular evaluation function and probability distribution? So let's first uh, ex uh, uh, try to uh, uh, write down the expression of what is the revenue of the auctioneer given a particular uh, uh, signaling scheme C. Um, so given a particular signaling scheme C, the, re the expected revenue of the auctioneer will be just the sum over all the clusters. And for each cluster, we take its probability multiplied by this expression. Note that this expression here is exactly the bid of, uh, of bidder i given the cluster L that contains, uh, the, given that he, he received the signal uh, CL. Um, so this will be just the expression um, that uh, shows us what will be the expected revenue of the auctioneer. We can do uh, a simple arithmetic manipulation. And the RMS problem, revenue maximization by signaling problem, is to design the signaling scheme C that maximizes R of C. Let's do a very simple uh, arithmetic manipulation to this expression. We can uh, easily see that this P of CL cancels out here. So we are left with this expression here, where here we have just PJ times VIJ. So uh, we can as well replace it by this variable that we call a, a Psi I of J. Now, this simple manipulation, it, it, it's, it's very simple uh, manipulation, but it takes us to a really nice combinatorial problem. So by doing this, so before we had this valuation matrix where we had the values 
inside the matrix. And for every column, we had uh, the probability, pj, of this, uh, of this item. And now what we do is we, we take this p of j into the matrix and replace this product, pj times vij, by this psi ij variable. And now we don't care anymore about the probability distribution, and we get a really natural and nice uh, combinatorial problem, which is which we call simplified RMS problem. And what we want is to design a signaling scheme C that maximizes this last expression. Let's look how it. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look how it looks like. So now here is the new uh, matrix. Now we don't have any more those probability on the columns. All we have is these. Uh, are these psi variables in the matrix, and we want to find the signaling scheme C that maximizes this expression. What is this expression? So let's, for example, take this signaling scheme C that partitions the goods into two clusters, C1 and C2. What is this expression here? For, for every cluster, we are summing here, we are summing over all the items in the clusters for every cluster, and we take the second highest row. So for cluster one, we have this is, say, max one, and this is max two. This is just summing over the items. And cluster two, we have a different max one and max two. What will be our expected revenue? It will simply be the sum of the max two from every uh, cluster. OK, so this is the problem that we want to study. So now uh, let me show you some results. So first of all, um, is this problem hard or easy to compute? Well, this problem uh, turns out to be strongly NP-hard. And uh, we do it by a reduction from three partition, uh, which is strongly NP-hard. So as a corollary, we know that uh, this problem admits uh, no f p tas unless uh, p uh, equals NP. And let me also mention that this problem remains hard even if every good is desired only by a single uh, bidder. So in every column, we have a single non-zero entry. And even if all we have are three bidders. Let me also mention that there are some cases, we identify some cases in which this problem becomes easy. For example, one of the cases is uh, if the valuation matrix is binary. All a, a user either desires the item or not desire the item. In this case, we devise a polynomial time algorithm to actually compute the maximal revenue, the, the signaling scheme that gives us the maximal revenue. OK, so this problem is strongly NP-hard. What do we do? Well, we try to devise an approximation algorithm for this problem. OK, so we indeed uh, devise uh, an approximation. Uh, so actually, we could not devise a PTAS for this problem. This is still an open problem, whether the problem, we know it doesn't uh, admit a, an F PTAS because it's strongly NP-hard, but we don't know yet whether it admits a PTAS. But we do have a constant factor approximation to the problem. Let me give you just uh, very, very roughly the idea of the approximation. So for every uh, bidder here, I'll color with red the columns for which this bidder is the has the highest valuation for this item. So for example, we know that this item that is, uh, is desired mostly by agent one, and these two items are desired mostly by agent two, et cetera, et cetera. And we have these gammas saying the sum of the valuations for those columns for which this bidder is the high, has the highest valuation for these items. Okay. And now what do we know? We know that uh, no uh, signaling scheme can hope to get for every item, we can't hope to get more than the highest value for this item, right? This is a second price auction. We definitely can't hope to get more than the uh, highest uh, value. So what we really want to do is to do some matching. Thank you is to do, uh, we, we are left with some kind of a matching problem where we want to match these groups. Yeah, these uh, uh, groups of red uh, uh, entries to each other in a way that will be close to each other. Because if they are closed, cl sufficiently close to each other, then the second row will approximate the first row very well. And we can't hope to get more than the first row. Then we have a very nice uh, approximation. So here is our, uh, uh, how our algorithm works. So first of all, uh, we have a first step where we greedily match uh, those sets that are close to each other. What do we mean by close? That are constant factor from each other. 
Okay, we do it greedily. So for example, here, let's say gamma one and gamma two are uh, uh, approximate each other with a constant factor. So we take a single cluster that has all of them. And we already know that for these uh, items, we are fine. We are very close to the highest value and we can hope to get uh, more than this. And then we take all of these items uh, aside and, the, and also the corresponding bidders and we are left with the same sub matrix. In this sub matrix uh, with which we are left, uh, all we know is that all of these gammas are far away from each other. They do, they, they do not have this constant factor approximation of each other. And then we show that one of um, these two other pos uh, options give us, uh, is good enough for the constant factor approximation. I'm not going to go into the details of how to prove it, but let me just mention to you what we do. So for the, for the rest, we take the best of either a single cluster that contains everything and, or a, just partitions all the rest into sing, singleton clusters. And to show that this is a good approximation, we use the fact that all the gammas that are left, uh, uh, that we couldn't match in this greedy step, uh, are far away from each other. Okay. Um, now let me go back to the, to the, uh, the question that we had before. So up until now, I assume that the valuation matrix is common knowledge. Everybody, so in, in particular, the auctioneer knows the actual valuation function. Those are, this is a fixed value uh, matrix. But uh, in practical settings, the auctioneer does not really know the exact valuation of each bidder. So really a better representation of the problem will be in a Bayesian setting where the bidder valuations, Vij, and consequently the Psi ij variables are really random variables. Okay, and then I can uh, also express the revenue, the auctioneer's revenue, uh, with exactly the same expression, just taking the expected value uh, of uh, psi ij uh, of this uh, expression. And now the question is, what can I do? Okay, so and I, I showed you that with fixed value valuation matrix, I can do constant factor approximation. Now in the Bayesian setting, the question is, what can we do? And let me show you uh, what we did. So. Um, we show, we, ident we show that for a specific family of random variables, we can use a version of our, of our approximation algorithm to uh, also get a constant factor approximation, even within this Bayesian setting. Uh, in particular, we show that if the valuation random variables are sufficiently concentrated around their expectation, then, well, then, then the, the problem possesses a constant approximation to the RMS problem. How can we do it? Well, very naturally, we take the algorithm and run it on the matrix of the expectation of the values. And because the random variables are concentrated around the expectation, we can show that it works. So for example, uh, if we have random variables that uh, have a very low critical ratio, this is the ratio between the expectation and the standard deviation, then it will work. If every, for every random variable, it is at most constant factor of its expectation, this will work. For example, if every random variable is uniformly uh, distribu distributed on some range, and every variable can be uh, distributed on a different range, then this will work. Uh, and obviously, a very natural open problem is to try to generalize this result. So we don't know if this technique can work for a more general family of distributions. And this is something that we really want to, to study. Okay, so with this, uh, I'm going to summarize, I think, yes. Uh, so uh, we study auction settings with asymmetry, asymmetry of information, this time between the auctioneer and the bidders. Uh, I showed you that a well-designed signaling scheme can significantly enhance the auctioneer's revenue. Uh, nevertheless, this problem, I mean, designing the best clustering scheme, the best signaling scheme is a hard problem, but we have a constant factor approximation for some families of uh, random variables, of random uh, uh, valuations. And let me also mention just very briefly uh, some future directions and ongoing directions. So first of all, uh, two natural open problems. We don't know if this problem uh, admits PITAS. This is one of the open questions. The second is to generalize our uh, approximation algorithm to more general distributions. And as was mentioned before, 
Uh, we currently also study uh, what, how much can the auctioneer gain by uh, devising asymmetric signaling schemes as opposed to the homogeneous signaling schemes that I presented in this work. And thank you very much. In hunger and uh, <laughs> please. <laughs> Very true. Uh, and in this case, uh, it uh, seems for me that uh, it's not uh, hard to com compute uh, the optimal signature in this case. Uh, okay, so so but it's very true that we can. I mean, this is a very particular way of signaling, just partitioning. It's a very simple one. We can definitely think of overlapping uh, clusters, etc. Uh, I'll be happy to hear about your idea about how to compute a, an optimal signaling scheme. I, I can't think of it right now, but I'll be happy to talk to you later. Thank uh, you. Jason? Take it or leave it offer to the best uh, bidder. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So let me reflect on uh, yesterday's panel, maybe. So first of all, first of all, uh, like Kevin suggested, I want it to be tied to real-world applications. And in many, many companies really use second price auction to do their auctions. Whether or not I can convince them to use another mechanism is a good question. But, uh, is a good, but I can come and tell them, well, see, if you're using second price auction, maybe you want to use some signaling scheme, and here is how you do it, et cetera, et cetera. What you propose is something like, so you're proposing to compare it to the, so you're proposing some, 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 in, some in a sense, some price of anarchy thing, which is dead, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but um, but uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, this is a good question, uh, comparing it to the, to the optimal, to the optimal one, taking, like, taking it into account any mechanism that you can use, right? That the bidders are IID, for instance. Uh, for instance yes, that, that that's true. 